Welcome back to Earthbound, guys. I'm the voice of Dog. We're gonna rest up a bit before we go knock on Monotoli's door again. And let's see if we can get that message that someone in chat mentioned. Every single hotel in this game has done this for us. 50% of Foresight citizens now support anti-Monotoli campaign. And on page 23 of the Foresight post, lonely demise in the city, long-haired man with beard, sunglasses, and Aloha shirt found in street. All right, then. Though, to be honest, we saw him walk away. Like, we... I, that sounds more like a person who saw the thing and then walked away. He might be dead. I don't know. It doesn't really... I don't really have any strong feelings either way. This is kind of the world that they... That's it's kind of the world they wanted to, you know, convey... That if you, you screw with people in this city, you end up with no job and no anything. Or maybe get killed? I don't know. Maybe? Who knows? Well, now we've got all this stuff. Still got that... Now, I got, now I've got that pencil eraser. <laughs> Ampillion, thanks for the host. Alright. I guess we'll have to drop by then. Like now. We came here briefly to see Mr. Pokey. Master Pokey, whatever they're calling him right now. He lost his shirt to the house. Or himself. You can actually go to Electra's room and she'll give you a trout yogurt item which recovers like 30 HP. Here we go, the secret elevator. Pretty empty office up here. Hello. The machine does damage. I don't know why, but I didn't even know that that thing does damage until I saw until today, just now. Very high velocity yogurt. There's rooms in here that just have people who make noises. Also, let's. No. Aw, oh, man. Well. Are they bathrooms? We don't know that. Oh, no. Oh, I think I, that's red. That's definitely red. No, it's blue. Okay. Are they bathrooms, or are they people you just put... You know, are they rooms you they just put people where they don't like? 
that they don't like. Could be a confinement room. Thank you. <laughs> 30 HP! Heck yeah! Delicious! 25 HP! This robot seems a little different, but he's a boss. It also seems like he's kind of falling apart a little. Clumsy Robot is a very strange fight. It doesn't follow the usual rules. Clumsy robot ate a bologna sandwich and is is invincible. Okay. Clumsy robot, you're making this difficult here. Thanks for the follow. He hasn't done any damage to me. This usually is a lot harder. This is a little weird. I'm like worried. <laughs> All of a sudden some guys rushed into the room. It was your pals, the Runaway Five. Oh. That boss has some really dangerous attacks that it was not using, and I'm kind of mad at that. That thing has bottle rockets, or something equivalent to it, and it can just absolutely wreck you. Also, yes, a robot with a switch on the back. It's welcome. Here's where it started. The Runaway 5 did say, someone did say, you would need our help to see Mr. Monotoli. I don't think... Well, we got XP for that thing. Yeah, the bologna sandwich doesn't... I don't think it has HP. So. Hello. Fake bear. Hey, Paula. We broke the statue and he's not all that r dangerous anymore. Paula just kind of hung out here for a bit.
So, uh, Mr. Mr. Real Estate Mogul, what's the deal? Statue makes you less good. Didn't want to keep it in the building, I guess. So he put it in a dive bar where no one would find it. I actually like that little detail. He often went there to pray to the statue. And the statue responded to him. And it told him to do things. Stop Juan and do so by your own hand. Which Monotoli never tried to do. He never... He will never try to fight us. Don't let them go to Summers. Make sure they know nothing of the pyramid. Statue instructing him how to impede our progress. It's almost like the statue is some sort of, I don't know, antenna for bad stuff. Everyone we've seen get involved with it uh, either loses the statue or does bad things with it. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't want to hear that again. No, thanks. Well, we got to go across the ocean again. Paulo is back. Welcome back, Paulo. Never really updated her equipment, but I guess I could uh, do that in summers. Okay, I'm glad that you gave us a helicopter with our own pilot. That's real nice of you, but I would prefer you wait for us to get in before... Oh, it's Pokey. Once again, Pokey has the last laugh. Goodbye. I'm sure we'll never see him again. Paula just had the thing in her brain. I feel like we need to go back to three. We should go back to three. Yeah. One more time. Let's ride the tour bus. Kid, what's up? I gotta I have to thank you for your weird yogurt machine. Also, Apple Kid has been doing some real research. He has found the enemy of humanity. The phase distorter. 
Dr. Andonauts, I don't think, is wandering around. I think he's just in his lab in Winters, so you should probably just go there. I'm really glad that Apple Kid updates us to let us know, like, hey, I found the mortal enemy of humanity. I know what you're doing, and I'm gonna help you out. We just, we need to make this special machine. So there's actually this little subplot that goes on through phone calls from Apple Kid that I kind of like. Nice little detail, I think. <laughs> Is Pokey's dad still here? No, he's gone. Well, I'm glad Orange Kid is checking up on us as well. <laughs> Orange Kid is trying to change a boiled egg back into a raw egg. <laughs> that was really more of a voicemail. One more time on the old bus. Why not? Well, I mean, I assume the joke there is that Apple Kid is working on a time machine, basically. And Orange Kid is just working on how to uncook an egg. Yeah, Deathspeak, that is, I think, is literally the joke, is that they're kind of working on the same thing, but one is practical and the other is just dumb. Well, thanks. See you later, I guess. It's funny, though. We do have teleport. We have no need of a ride, but we're not going to turn down a ride from the Runaway 5. I'm sorry. It's just not. That would be silly. He was right, though. We left a thing here. A sort of important thing. And we kind of didn't address it afterwards. We just kind of walked out. Hang on, let me just fix my spaceship. Okay, done.
There's a plan. Go back to Winters and figure out how to get this thing to Summerland. Can we fit three people in this thing? I guess we'll find out. I'll just make the same flight we did before, in reverse. So I guess with that, that completes our adventures in Foresight. We have solved the mystery of Mr. Monotoli, gotten our friend back. No more uh, your sanctuary locations. However, we are going back to Winters where we did find one previously. Really close to the lab we're going to, in fact. So we're going to have a chance to take a crack at that. The sesame seed couple lived happily ever after because I reunited them, or at least told them that they were not mad at each other. I mean, the rest is up to them. I didn't actually bring them together. I just, you know, kind of listened to both of them. No, actually, the one in Foresight is still there, and we're not able to get to that yet. We will eventually. The game kind of leaves that as an aside. Also, hello. Alright, bye. Oh, thanks, Kaparama. Thanks for hanging out. I see you have a new friend here. <laughs> Dad. 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 I also like how Andonat's just, uh just has new people in his lab. Is this cave boy? Yeah, we're friends. Bubble monkey? Yeah, we met. We're cool. <laughs> My co-worker. That's how he addresses him. That's good. I like that. Dr. Andonaut seems like a nice person overall. He's a bit neglectful in the dad department, but aside from that, um, beef jerky, I guess, is good. <laughs> Dad, no. Dad. Dad. <laughs> right after the bedwetting thing... Juan's dad calls him. Is that your dad? Oh my god, he's the worst! I know! Ah! Never leaves me alone. I don't see myself using the... Well, maybe I'll just throw him. <laughs> Dr. Andonauts and, and Ness's dad getting together to talk about how both their sons went to bed. Oh my god, he did it for years. We like we tried everything, man. <laughs> so I guess we're oh, okay, we are definitely over leveled for the cave boys, but the bears, those guys are new, I think. Mighty Bear 7. Yeah, that guy. That guy might hurt us. We have Paulo back, though, so that's that's cause for celebration. Wow, what a hit. What a hit.
Okay, so I think there's a bunch of new enemies in here, but you don't have to fight any of them because they put the spot right here, which is weird. I probably would have put the spot somewhere else so that you would have to go through, the, I don't know, may, make a level out of it, I don't know, whatever. But here he is, it's Shroom. I don't remember what Shroom does. That's unfortunate. That could, that could go south. This could super go south. Okay, good. Now I have to be really careful what Paulo does. Here, at least I'll have a one-third chance of avoiding damage. I'm sorry, but poison isn't such a threat to me anymore. In fact, I could probably tank it. Alright, let's go for it. Go for broke here. Consistently lucking out from this, actually. Good. Shroom not doing a lot in terms of offense. He seems to be expecting confusion to rip us apart, which could, actually. But it's not. Luck is on my side this time. Get some experience for Paulo after not having her around for a couple bosses. So here it is. It's rather abrupt, but it's spot number four. We're halfway done. Lon caught a whiff of GORP, but just for a second. Oh, Flash can kill Shroom. Okay. Yeah, I remember hearing that some of them were... That something is weak. Oh, oh, hello, all the enemies that did not show up before. Let's show you off, at least. Strong Crocodile. Elder Batty. Stronger cave enemies. Oh wow, that's a pretty strong crocodile. Nice hit. That was the fourth. Let's, uh, let me just... Let me just jam this in our forehead. Oh. <laughs> Arachnid! Good enemy names. The Arachnid!
And I think that's the new enemies, pretty much, that they put in this place. Yeah, you don't really get a chance to appreciate these enemies. I at least wanted to show off that they're there. Okay, well, we took care of our thing, and it didn't really take that long. I hope, you know. Yeah, Ace the Golden, that does sound like what they're trying to do with uh, Knuckles Sandwich. <laughs> okay, it shouldn't break this time. Hopefully... into the saucer again. Now boarding the flight orb to Summers. altitude. Okay, that seemed like a pretty large boom for that pretty gentle crash landing we had. Also, oh no. Jeff, why did we crash on the beach? <laughs> our, our reliable device. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing we can teleport, otherwise we'd be stranded here. So here we are. In summer. Zers. Summers. Plural summers. A dream paradise. Everyone here is obsessed with just relaxing. We're not- we don't have time for that. We have a destiny to fulfill. As we were passing by, I saw you. You look familiar. <laughs> you like adventure? You shouldn't be here. But across the sea, across another ocean? Didn't we just go across an ocean to get here? Gelato, hell yeah. Better believe I'm getting some gelato. Would you skip gelato? I don't want to talk to you if you would skip gelato. <laughs> Among fashionable young women. <laughs> About 30 HP. Wonderful. Is that even... Now I'm even thinking about that. Is that even possible? Can you tan the palms of your hands if you, like, really, really, really work at it? Would you even want to? Yeah, also, what if you burn them? 
I can't touch anything. I have sunburn. Where? On my hands. I don't think I ever saw this. Man, how about that? Yes, ignoring the incredible hyperinflation for $50 gelato. I mean, I can afford it. I beat up a lady on the street and I get 140 bucks. That's three, th almost three gelatos. Oh no. <laughs> That's Disneyland gelato, hell yeah. Yeah, $50 gelato. Better believe it. Okay, so the Mad Taxi was in the previous uh, town. I don't know about the craze sign. I think the craze sign can show up, but I did not see it at all. There's a couple new enemies here, I think. There's a stand here, but no one's manning it. Why, why are you are wandering around? <laughs> Thanks. Oh boy. It's a resort town and it has prices to match. Look at this $10,000 diamond band. Now, platinum band, we've already got one of those, which is real nice, but... Oh boy, is this the expensive place. It's time. It's time to empty our bank account. That's 4,000, not 40,000. I wanted more than that. <laughs> Also, yeah, there's an upgraded bear. Alright, I think it's time to get rid of these bombs. A couple of these bombs. I'm not gonna need all these bombs. I'm not gonna need these fries. Alright. Let the pain commence. Paulo, you are behind on equipment, so... Yep. Yep, time to upgrade you. Now, I feel like Juan has a bit of defense right now. Yeah, he's still pretty good with the Platinum Band. I could save some money by not buying a third Platinum Band. Or Diamond Band. We'll get a new bat, though. Well, that's pretty much all of our money. Hmm, not a big increase on that. 
Let's see, so the Saturn coin is good for quite a while, but... Peter's out here. Now we are poor again. You know, Mr. Baseball, that guy. He's really good at, I don't know, I think it's baseball? I see you sign. Let's go to a high class restaurant. <laughs> I love this, he won't even let us sit down. Oh uh, yeah, I guess you could do takeout maybe. Jackass. Give me your super expensive Kraken Thin Soup. Also the special. Oh yeah, sure, I'm not gonna drop and spill it since I can't eat here. Jack off. Well, you know, you gotta get your souvenirs, edible or otherwise. I don't know what Kraken Soup does, honestly. I guess we'll find out. So Summers is actually pretty small. I'm sorry, it's just the sign outside says Club Stoic, so I thought it might be a Stoic club, but it's not. I'm sorry. My mistake. We'll check out the museum a little later. I don't think it's something we need to do right now. That's right, there's the port town that's just next door. It's a strange cat sprite. I can't quite parse it, but I recognize that it's supposed to be a cat. It seems like they just modified their dog sprite, honestly. It's my dream town. And there's a second shop here. There's a cheaper shop, actually. And that's what they have. You mean the one that's, like, just down the street from here? Yes. Ah. Hell yeah, let's get cultured. Or whatever goes on in there. Tony, how did you get this number?
They give you a lot of characters for this. That's my full name. Okay, Tony, goodbye now. I know you're worried. We'll talk to you later. We'll see you again someday. Okay, Tony. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, you hang up first. Okay. <laughs> what an odd interruption. Also, there's... That's yet another cat. Oh, well, it's a port town. Of course, there's a bunch of cats. Will you take us across the ocean? <laughs> I'm not projecting. You're projecting. Also, what? I mean, it might be. You might need to... I, I don't think you want our advice about this, really, but maybe we'll go see if we can find your wife. Fix this guy's marriage for him, because what is a JRPG if you don't randomly have to fix someone's uh, uh, marriage for them. <laughs> After, like, having dogs in five towns, the dogs are starting to get self-aware? Yeah, the true horror relationship problems. Alright, this town is just full of cats. It's fine. Oh, right. We gotta call the number first before we go. Otherwise, it doesn't count. Now we have a phone number for the Stoic Club. Take it. Oh no, he juked me! Oh! Oh, you tricky bastard. So let's try to ascertain what's going on here. There is a rock up on the stage. <laughs> this place, you know, all the dialogue in here, it only feels truer to, to modern day instead of like things that people talked about back in the 90s. Because let's face it, we didn't have stuff uh, like Twitter that kind of put the public discourse or put a 
type of public discourse on display. So this kind of stuff wasn't so common. Nowadays, it feels like this is more the way things are. People doing this. <laughs> Didactically speaking, seminal evidence seems to explicate the fact that your repudiation of entropy supports my theory of space-time synthesis. Of this, I am irrefutably confident. Thanks for the follow. <laughs> and yeah, the guy talking about the final collapse of capitalism is really good. That's the, th that's the one that really jumps out at me. I finally awaken the inner me, the true self. Nice, garlic bug. Are you doing an art degree? Do you, is there a particular uh, thing you're into? Sculpture, maybe? <laughs> My id is telling me. I should really read this out. I finally awaken the inner me, the true self. The patrons of this club are able to stare into their soul, their own soul, hard enough to burn a hole in their psyche. I'm now comfortable enough to stare at the real me, the true self, and burn the impression into my superego. I want to be in this comfort zone at any time, all the time, or at no time. My id is telling me. And this guy, what is everyone talking about? Oh, he just works here, okay. He's not hanging out here trying to fit in, he just works here. And they pay for water. <laughs> and the chance to have serious intellectual discussions. It's an easy business, actually. Really want some magic cake. Yeah, we heard about that. Oh. <laughs> anyway, the absolute irony in study of self-identification is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I just really like this room. This, it, it was a room where, you know, as a kid, I would stop and try to read the dialogue a bit more because they were trying to go for something and my kid mind couldn't really grasp it. But yeah, everyone stares at the stone on stage and philosophizes. Doesn't that sound stupid? I mean, it could be good. Depends on what's in people's minds, you know? There's probably some good stuff in there. You just gotta sort the good out from the bad. Also, hello, we require magic cake. You, the woman who has mastered her superego and her id. I came all the way to Summers just for your magic cake. Yes, that is entirely a true statement. Summers almost feels like a bit of a gimme compared to, like, Foresight, because Foresight gives you numerous obstacles uh, that that end up panning out to be, you know, difficult dungeons. You got Moonside, you got the department store, you got the mole hole. Also, this bird just quotes people in town that it, that is heard. That's cool. If you if you have a tolerance for that stuff, then absolutely. If you can operate in that world, then I say go for it. I ended up taking a few fine art classes myself, and when they were good, they were good. It's it's you know having having to be able to like work on a thing and do a critique, you know, a group critique and learn from your students, your your other your colleagues is really valuable. There you are. <laughs> I don't know who told you it was supposed to be a secret. When you say leftover materials... Oh.
One had a dream. It was a very clear and very strange dream. Man, these edibles ain't shit. Oh no, I can feel it in my blood. Yes, we're going to a new place. We're having we're having a bit of a out of body experience, I guess you could say. It's time to beat Rango, finally. Rango has to do something to finish his training. He needs to go to the place of emptiness and endure a test. Well, Rango, you are equipped with a tiny ruby and a bottle of water. Take that cup of life noodles. Take that brain food lunch. A brain stone. What does brain stone do? Enables you to concentrate without using your own brain. That just sounds wondrous. Rango starts at level 15. Also, this guy is a phone. <laughs> Hang on, I need to save my game by calling some guy's dad. I need to pretend to be his son. Don't ask, it's weird, alright? It's it, Just go with it. It's kind of just this weird kingdom in the clouds at the top of a mountain. Take that free water. Nope, got a train. <laughs> Wait, did you just roast some garlic and eat just the garlic? Deli sauce. What is deli sauce? Oh no, it's a spice! No! You tricked me into getting... Uh, you tricked me into picking up a spice. <laughs> you know that you do do everything well, right? Doo-doo? Oops. Extremely. She didn't say anything about toast. She just said roasted garlic. What is PP? And yeah, this the, they're doing some kind of like Southeast Asian thing here, but it's not really clear. It's kind of like India and a little Chinese as well. Maybe Tibet. I'm not an expert on Asian culture. In, uh, by any means. So I'm not really sure what sort of uh, cultural mishmash is going on here. 
as strange as this may sound, I love how many sentences in this game starts with stuff like that. This is Mew, the place of nothingness. We have to clear everything from our mind. We can learn the true meaning of Mew. Do we have the Mew nature? Bye, Tornado Man. We'll see you again, maybe? Mostly, uh, Death Speak, it's that they take up space and aren't effective enough to really justify taking up a space. So here we go. Let us train. This is a common trap. Attempt to distract me from training. The only thing that matters is nothing. We must wait. Well, I guess if I don't need my legs, after all, Mew is Mew. <laughs> Psych, thank you for the host during our Mew training, where we learned the meaning of nothingness. Our legs are broken. Our arms are broken. Well, we did it. We are willing to give up everything. We have passed our training. What a good sequence where you kind of realize that your four, your your fourth party member comes from a different place, has a bit of a different background. And has had to come to grips with the fact that you might have to give up a few things. You're going to do something kind of dangerous. So at any point during that, you can, you know, you can say no and you will just, you know, get booted out of the training and have to sit back down 
walk up here and do all that all over again. We have learned everything. By the way, fight destiny. Here's a bunch of experience. Also, we gave him teleport data, which allows you to do a tight circle. Not as tight as Rango did just now. So Rango just teleports to Summers and just goes, I am the one who will fight beside you. <laughs> <laughs> I am your servant. Well... We have obs we have assembled the party. We are extremely confused, but not going to complain. Oh, nice. That would I think deli sauce goes with everything, so at least that's I'll hang on to that. But now that we have Rango, uh, we can start doing some research. Magic Tart for $500. Also, hello sign. Rango's also a kid. I'm pretty sure Rango is like the same age as the rest of them, roughly. He's also supposed to be a kid. Rango didn't even get to move. Rango's just hanging back right now, kind of getting the feel of things. You know, he's, he's joining a group that's been together for a little while. Yeah, he's just been trained, disciplined since childhood. Mr. Spoon? We met him. Wait, did we meet him? Yeah, Mr. Spoon's from the Foresight Museum. Yeah, we met him. He's lonely and he's not good at dinosaurs. Hmm. We did see a message left on a billboard for us from our friend and neighbor. I'm sorry? Okay, Rango, you may not understand this, but that thing you have is extremely valuable. Please give it to that guy and do us a solid. Thank you. I'm impressed by your passion for learning. No, but he wasn't good at dinosaurs. That's what I was trying to say, I think. He was bad at dinosaurs. He did not know his dinosaurs that well. Good for you. 
Something's off about this room, though. Shattered Man. So, Rango is kind of a uh, mix between Paulo and Juan. He can do some good damage with Psychic. He doesn't have as much... He doesn't have as many points as uh, Paulo, though. Was that a 10 HP smash hit? I mean, congratulations on hitting his vital weak point. It's all right, Paulo's not doing that much damage either. He's trying, okay? <laughs> He's like 15 levels behind us. Oh, there's a second one. We can only fight one at a time. How about we finish this in one round instead? There we go. A lot of experience from them. <laughs> so, Rango, what did your training involve? Uh, practicing for eventual dismemberment, the eternal darkness that will swallow all of our minds and existences and memories. <laughs> you know, that stuff. Oh. <laughs> so Rango can read the hier hieroglyphs for us because, uh, uh, yeah, because he can. place out of time is beyond the dark and is even farther beyond the lost underworld. Something about a deep darkness and a Hawkeye. And some kind of hint. We feel like we are experiencing a very important historical period here. Thank you, sir. Uh, the receptionist isn't here. It's really none of our business, but... All right. Oh, it's Mr. Spoon from the Forsyth Museum of Natural History. He found something incredible. Well, we could go to Skaraba, I think. But the game is kind of trying to distract us, almost. In fact, let me just check to make sure. Oh, hang on. Oh, man, we got a, our first photo with the whole group. How wonderful. Nice landing, by the way. All right, everyone. All right, Rango, show... Give us your pose, your best s smile pose. The royal artist is going to paint a portrait of you. What's your pose? Solid choice.
Guys got some real solidarity back there. I keep trying to smile, but you guys... Man. <laughs> Thank you, you made my wife wake up. Just quit talking about all that serious crap. Okay, so he can take us to Skaraba, but we're not going to go there just yet. Thanks for hanging out, Garlic Bug. So I guess we're going back to the big city. Also, you might notice that Rango doesn't have any equipment. Um, that's kind of because there is equipment for him, but it's rare. There's like four pieces of equipment for him, one for each slot, and that's it. Huh. I certainly cannot. I guess I should probably stay at the hotel. That's not the hotel. The hotel is down this way. What? <laughs> That's a weird one. All right. Okay, guys, let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back and talk to Mr. Spoon. Hear about a wondrous discovery 